I'm Dr. Sachin Kulkarni, consultant in reproductive medicine, and today I'll be discussing with you anti-mullerian hormone in endometriosis. What is known in correlation between AMH and endometriosis, that is the surgical treatment of endometriosis is dualistic. The complete excision will benefit the pain relief and will be less on relapse, but at the same time it will affect the ovarian reserve very adversely. It's also known that AMH is low in minimal to mild endometriosis as well, just not associated with endometrioma, but any kind of endometriosis <coughs> will have low AMH association. Endometriosis have a negative effect on spontaneous ovulation. So these are all the facts which are known to us. <coughs> what are the theories of decrease in ovarian reserve? The cyst itself can cause a negative effect on the surrounding tissue, hence decreasing the anti mullerian hormone. Unintentional removal of follicles during surgical excision is very common. Damage because of blood flow interruption and inflammation because of usage of diathermies there. And all these is related to decrease in the AMH because of treatment of endometriosis. And there have been studies who have tried to estimate the rate of decline of AMH. And what we mean by that? The rate of decline of AMH means is equal to 100 into preoperative AMH negative the postoperative AMH divided by the preoperative AMH. So it is known that there is a significant decline in AMH with bilateral cyst than the unilateral cyst. And there is no much correlation with the cyst size, the amount of blood loss, the surgical time, which all depends upon the pre-op AMH level. And that will determine how fast the AMH will decline or how much AMH will decline after surgery is done. <coughs> Let's go a bit detail into the histopathological picture between an endometriotic cyst removal. If you look at the picture of the histopathology, the zone 1 here is just the glandular epithelium of the cyst, which is so thin. Then there is an area of fibrotic lining. But look at the histopathological picture. Two thirds of it is nothing but ovarian parenchyma. And this ovarian parenchyma is definitely going to have so many small follicles which will be inadvertently removed at the time of surgery. This is very unlike that of a dermoid cyst removal. The amount of ovarian parenchyma which is removed at endometriotic cyst removal is about 10 times more than that of a dermoid cyst. And what we think that this is a hypothetical cleavage plane, it does not exist between the cyst and the fibrotic wall, but actually this hypothetical cleavage plane is part of the ovarian parenchyma itself. And Laparoscopic stripping of endometriomas negatively affects the ovarian follicle reserve, even performed by the experienced surgeon. So what has been suggested when you come across cases of ovarian endometrioma? Don is et al. in 2001, they talked about fenestration and vaporization. Do a fenestration, do an ovarioscopy, look at the solid areas inside of the cyst and <coughs> coagulate or vaporize them. Laparoscopic cystectomy was uh, advised by Albozzi et al. in 2004. And Donings again published a paper who said that rather than using a repeated bipolar cautery to achieve hemostasis, it's advisable better to take a suture to approximate the ovary or reconstruct the ovary so that the ovarian long-term damage decreases. There is this interesting paper which has been published called Recommendations for the Surgical Treatment of Endometriosis uh, and it was, this is on ovarian endometrioma. And these recommendations have said that you should use a cold cut incision and you should, your incision should be as away from the hilum as possible. Many a times when we are removing the ovary from its adhesions, by the time you remove from the posterior wall of the broad ligament, the endometrioma will inadvertently open up. Diluted vasopressin should be used if the cyst wall is difficult to separate. We must just obtain a biopsy and ablate and spot ablation with irrigation so spot ablation, repeated irrigation, just achieve hemostasis that is advisable rather than randomly coagulating a larger tissue chunks. And again, instead of doing excess coagulation, it is better to put an internal suture and reconstruct the ovary so that your adhesions would be less at the same time the ovarian parenchyma will be preserved. It has also recommended how much amount of current should be used. If you are using a bipolar current, you must use it at 25 to 40 watts only and a monopolar current should be used at 15 to 20 watts of energy. And what happens after the surgery? 
of endometrioma there is rearrangement of follicles what we what we understand by that is the amh producing follicles they will be preantral follicles or early antral follicles they will be damaged during the course of surgery so there would be a some amount of fall in amh but there will be large amount of primordial follicles which are still there and over a period of next 3 to 4 months these primordial follicles will grow and they can become preantral or early antral follicles and they will again secrete amh so there would be some amount of recovery of amh which will take place but not in all cases removal of ovarian cortex and the cystectomy is will definitely cause the short term decrease in amh as we understood earlier and a medium term influence whether the amh will recover or will remain suppressed or will further go down and down will depend upon how much vascular compromise your surgery has caused and there's a possibility you could have used uh, a lot of cautery near the hilum you could have done an excess coagulation of the tissue and definitely there would be an ischemic injury there would be huge amount of inflammation and the inflammation post surgical inflammation causing destruction of few follicles and your amh would be down for a long term reason let's say you have an endometrioma and you have a question whether we should operate on it or you did not operate on it and this is a beautiful paper paper this was reviewed by dr gudi in one of his earlier presentation as well i'm just touching the paper again an endometrioma related reduction in ovarian reserve and this was a prospective longitudinal study and in this study they have not operated the patient neither given any medical or surgical therapy and what they have found is when there is a presence of an endometrioma over a period of time there is a 26% decrease in the amh while in the control group without endometrioma the fall in amh is only 7% so sheer presence of endometrioma is enough to cause an exponential downfall in the amh and thus the ovarian reserve basically this could be because of the surrounding cortex which is compressed and which in turn causes ischemic follicular loss and inflammation causing the follicular damage and a lot of hemosiderin which is deposited there and that causes excess iron in in that area and that could also cause inflammation or chemical reaction and this is the hypothesis which has been put forward that why endometrioma will progressively damage the amh further compared to the control group as we understand an endometriosis is an estrogen dependent disorder so we have whenever there is a hyperestrogenic state like polycystic ovary is there chance of having more endometriosis is a casual relationship or it could be a causal relationship uh, but in practice you will see that most of your patients of endometriosis and adenomyosis will be patients with low ovarian reserve a very handful of them will have polycystic ovary associated with endometriosis but probably the relation is there because both are hormonal disturbances both polycystic ovary and endometriosis there is chronic low grade inflammation in both the situations and this is a few papers only two papers have reported an association and but they said that it is the minimal to mild endometriosis which is more commonly found in pcos than the endometrioma so a very handful of you could have experienced an endometrioma even in a polycystic ovary patient uh so it could be it's a paradoxical thing actually but very few patients would have a association with pcos and thus but most important before we conclude this presentation that amh estimation is a must in every case of endometriosis whether you're going for medical therapy surgical therapy or even you're not doing any therapy for that it must be done in every case now should we do it in adolescent group who has endometriosis and they are not chasing fertility yes you should do it even in adolescent group post operatively there is no point in doing amh very fast because there would be a small fall but the recovery you wouldn't estimate so it's better to do amh 6 months after the surgery so whatever recovery and whatever ischemic damage has taken place it has had its effect and you will get a truthful picture of the antimullerian hormone level at that point and uh, this amh pre operatively is very important because we commonly see patients with a very low amh before the surgery and after doing the surgery obviously the amh is going to fall further and you will be able to select the patients for donor gamete program and even from the medical legal point of view i feel it's better to have a pre operative amh because if you don't have that value and post operatively the amh suddenly comes 0.3 or 0.5 nanogram the patient can implicate it to the surgical procedure so if you have a pre operative amh it becomes a better counseling thing thank you so much
Thank you.